After a record sales year in Vancouver real estate market, we have now entered into a different environment. Uh, with the recent series of interest rate hikes, the monthly benchmark price in Vancouver saw its first decline in nearly two years. To provide some insight on the current Vancouver real estate market, we are joined by Chantelle Vignola, who has over 13 years experience in the industry with her team of nine, and they are very active in this market. Uh, Chantelle, thanks for joining us. And tell us a bit more about the, uh, the brand real estate group. Hi, thank you, Austin. Uh, Chantal Vignola, the brand real estate group. Yeah, I've been in the in the industry, like you said, for over 13 years. I started uh, with Century 21. And then the last couple of years started um, our own team, the brand real estate group. So we have an office in Coal Harbor, right on the seawall there. My husband and I started the team and we are seven realtors, um, in-house market marketing director and executive assistant. And so we specialize in the downtown Vancouver condo market, as well as the North Shore market and, and Vancouver as well. But we also have realtors that um, will go on the outskirts, just specialize each realtor specialized for each location. But personally, I focus mostly on the downtown condo market and the North Shore market. Um, yeah, it's a two-year-old team, but as I said, we've been in the industry for a long time. Um, but we, you know, started the team so that we could um, provide better service and offer um, in-house marketing. And we're kind of uh, catering to a white glove um, real estate service. So we're sort of thinking that we can deliver a four seasons of real estate kind of um, service. So really high-end service for our clients. Love that. Love that uh, comparison there. Great, uh, great yeah. hotel. So, and uh, hus husband, wife uh, team there. How's, uh, how's that dynamic? You know, it's really good. <clears throat> my, um, my stepdad, so Doug, so Mitchell's dad, um, my mother and him were both in the commercial world, uh, real estate world. And so as a teenager growing up, I would always really love the energy. And so I remember being in the back of the car, Mitchell and I, and uh, their banter back and forth it's just so intense and so like I would feed off of it and love it and and so that's what we do you know like we oh yeah nice work babe on that deal you know okay I have a problem here like shooting the shit back and forth part my French um and it, it really works like we just we just really feed off each other and we bring new ideas to the table and we help each other and so it's a really good work dynamic and you know when we when we were around each other too much we're like I'll be in the office and you can stay home and <laughs> we make it work but for the most part it's fantastic we have a great working relationship so wonderful yeah. those are awesome yeah. stories there and uh here, here's a question i'm sure you're getting asked a lot right now is with with the increase in, in interest rates that you know how, how is the market responding right now what are you guys seeing in terms of activity level sales what, what are you guys seeing in market respond responding to it, this yeah there's different pockets so the detached market has definitely changed um so the north vancouver detached market and the east vancouver detached market were the markets that were seeing the most attention for the last two years now that's changed considerably um so what you know a house price for two million dollars maybe they were getting 10 offers maybe now they're getting one or two if that and those offers have conditions uh, attached to them because people's financing conditions are changing and so the borrowing power has changed right so you know what your mortgage maybe you were able to borrow up to 2.5 now that's changed to 2.2 and people are going through the stress tests and so that's affecting their their buying power also that they're um they're running out of time and so their rate holds expiring and they have to reapply and do a new um <clears throat> mortgage application and so that's definitely changing things there's also buyer fatigue right people are just uh and if they've written five six seven offers they're just taking a break and seeing what happens in the fall um and so because you know, there's more inventory on the market, there's more choice and people are able to take a little bit more time. So for sure that this interest rate hike has changed the market in that segment. And everything under a million dollars is still relatively active. Investors are coming back um, because the rent, the rents are so high. And so there's little um, out there to, to rent. And so investors are starting to take advantage of this market because their returns are so much better. And so we're seeing a lot more investors in the city. Um, and, you know, then there's going to be the, the owners that are affected by their rate holds changing. And um, perhaps there's going to be people that are going to have to be forced to sell their homes. And so there's lots of different changes happening in the market right now. Um, but the market that we're seeing the most changes that detached housing market between one five and two five, where the rate holds are expiring, their purchase 
power has, ch has changed and, um, and, and, and that's affecting the market. Plus there's more inventory coming up and then just sitting. So it's uh, definitely a big shift. Yeah, lots going on, especially in those different asset classes, the condos, townhomes, detached homes. Um, is there one of those asset classes that you're seeing the biggest shift in? Um, and is there maybe an area in one of those uh, markets that is maybe an area of opportunity for an investor or someone looking to get into the market? Yeah, so for sure, again, it's that. <clears throat> so the luxury condo market has been flat for the past three years. So that that market for sure. But, you know, whoever's got eight million bucks uh, to buy a condo downtown has got the power anyway. Um, and for sure, the townhouse market, you know, what was a townhouse, you know, 1.5 to 1.75, again, in the last six months, you know, those townhouses were seeing anywhere from six to eight offers, and now they're seeing one to two, and then they have conditions. So that's changing the detached market under, you know, anywhere from any, really anything in the detached market, North Van, East Van, um, there's more opportunity for the buyer just based on the fact that a, there's more inventory and B, there's less people bidding. And so maybe that they can buy it at asking as opposed to $300,000 over. Is there, um, has there been a price correction yet? Not necessarily, just less volume and less competition. So buyers can go, oh, wow, there's two houses I like. Maybe I can buy one of them as opposed to this frenzy of maybe buying a house that you don't love, but you, you know there's no inventory out there and so you're just caught up. Um, so there's opportunity for the buyer to take a breath and, and actually buy something that, that suits all their needs and, and buy it with um, uh, a, a, an inspection clause in there and not have the pressure be on their shoulders so much and take some time to you know, reflect on what they're buying and just and, and, and buy less in a frenzy. Now, if they're willing to hold on and they are qualifying at the new rate and they're comfortable with that um, mortgage payment and, they, and they've uh, um, gone through the stress test and all as well, then yes, I think that coming into the fall here that they're going to see some opportunity to pick up something at probably, you know, maybe a five to 10 price correction from our peak in February or March, you know, what that house was selling for, let's say 2.5 is maybe now 2.3, but it was never supposed to be 2.5 in the first place because that house was listed at 2.1 and sold for 2.5. And so it's, it, you know, we saw a, a high peak and then we're getting back to that normal threshold from where we were. And so it was a, you know, a short window for that seller to, 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 achieve that two five for example where that kind of is over now that peak that window is has passed um and so for sellers is is um i think it's important to to realize that the window came and went and mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're still in a seller's market um but for the buyer if they can hold on until the fall i think that they're going to see more inventory and then then there'll be some more um room for them to pick up something at a, at a better price from where it was you know, in the last three, four months. Um, as an investor, the city has been flat right through COVID, right? So um, if, you're a, if you're an investor coming into the city and picking up a two bedroom condo with um, water views for 1200 a foot, well, you can't even get much on the North shore for that right now. So coming back into the city is definitely where it's at for investors. Yeah, it definitely makes for a more healthy, you know, buying environment for buyers, having the inventory, giving them a little more confidence to put some clauses in there, whether that's a subject inspection or financing gives them uh, a little a little more confidence in, you know, a crazy market at some times. And so with with you guys being on literally on the seawall there, you guys you know must see a lot of foot traffic in that area, you know, over the last two, three years during the pandemic. Did people actually leave downtown? Like, was there an exodus of people leaving the the core, and are people coming back back downtown? What do you What are you guys seeing there? For sure. So for our office is on the seawall, so we, you know, on average get twelve hundred eyes per day on our windows. So we get a lot of foot traffic. You know, that was those numbers were taking when we didn't have the. Um, cruise ships coming in. And so, you know, are those real buyers? No, they're just eyes walking by. So yes, for sure. People left the city uh, during the pandemic. And, and, and so there were various reasons. They left the city because they were, could work from home. They left the city. Also the, um, the insurance crisis kind of happened right when the pandemic started and people were trying to get out of strata. It was all over the news, you know, and insurance premiums go through the roof, deductibles go through the roof. That uh, problem has sort of leveled out where people are more comfortable dealing with these 
higher um, deductibles and, and figuring out um, how to work around the strata insurance. And, you know, so that, so that crisis has, has cooled. Um, the homeless situation in the city got really bad during the pandemic. Uh, you know, I had a lot of clients wanting to leave the city during the pandemic because of the homeless crisis. So getting out of Yale Town, getting out of Gastown, Cool Harbor, not so much. Um, and so um, that hasn't really improved. Um, but what's interesting is that because you could work from home during the pandemic, um, you know, people want their people back. And so the city has all of this built new um, commercial space that's just sitting there. It has been leased. I think it's over like 3 million square feet of office space has actually been leased, but not yet occupied. So what's going to happen is that all, you know, people that bought out in Abbotsford or um, Maple Ridge to work from home are going to be called back into the office and the city's going to be coming back to life again. And we've already started to see that happen. You know, um, COVID is, still out there people are getting COVID left right and center but it's more manageable where people are still coming in well they're not coming in when they're sick but they're you know it, it's 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 a manageable what it's a, it's more manageable so you're expected to be in the office so whatever people are working out you have to work from home two days a week and the rest you have to be in the office and so um that's going to be good for um you're, you you need to be back in the city. So do you want to drive the hour from Maple Ridge or are you going to sell your Maple Ridge home, come back to the city and how that how's that going to work? But the transition is still happening. So I think that there's still opportunity for buyers to buy in the city before we see the city go back up again because it's been so flat since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and so, you know, buildings like the Amazon building will be almost done. And, um, and then you've got all those new people coming in to work in the in the city. And so for investors, picking up a condo at 1200 bucks a foot and renting it out for $5 a foot is an extremely good opportunity for them to take advantage of a high rental market and, a you know, still a buyer's market in, in the city for the most part. And for those people that are willing to, to hold off a little while, as you mentioned, maybe getting out of a slight discount, um, everyone wants to uh, you know wait for that that opportunistic time. If there's someone or you're a buyer looking to time the bottom of the market, is there any type of advice that you're giving them? Um, and is that uh, you know a good method to go about uh, buying a new place? No, uh, if it's a if it's a property that you're going to live in, I say don't try to time the market. Like if you find something that you love buy it. I bought my house at the very peak of the market in 2016 um, and, and bought for a price that people thought was completely insane. Um, and now we've doubled our money. So I bought from my heart when it came to personal real estate. If you're an investor, of course, it's all about the numbers. Um, so it really depends. So if you're, if you're buying for personal reasons, if you don't buy that house that you love, you never know when the house that you love is going to come back around. So for personal um, I would say, you know, if something, you know, pulls at your heartstrings, then you should go for it. If, if it's from an investment standpoint, um, what I've seen is that the properties that um, have unobstructed views are the ones that are going to see the highest appreciation in the city. Um, but if the, you know, if it's a good building um, that's been well maintained, that has good walkability, it, if it has, you know, a decent outlook um, and you're within the comparables and you're able to rent it out uh, and the numbers look good, then go for it. Well, we're going to, the city has been like this, so we're going to see it come back to life again. And we're, we're starting to see that now. So, yeah. When, when you, you know, you know, when you talk about real estate and the cycles and, you know, Vancouver has been flatlined and, and when, um, um, when you take a look at, at today and you look back in your, your career here, is there any times that you would compare the market today to any time in the past? I know that there's different indicators making the market do different things, but are there any comparisons that you can draw to any time in, in the past? So, I mean, I've never um, been in a pandemic market, so there's that. Um, so taking that out of the equation, um, in 2017, the city saw a peak. Um, and in 2016, the detached market saw a peak. Um, and then it cooled down a bit. And then there was another um, peak in 2000 and, uh, 
So, so we kind of saw that cycle, 2016 and then 17, a city, and then 18, 19, a cool, and then the beginning of the pandemic with the detached housing market. And I remember going through the 2016 um, market thinking, yeah, there's not enough land for all the people that want to live here, you know, and then, and then it cooled off again. And so, um, but it's, it's supply and demand, right? There's just, there's, you know, we're in one of the best cities in the world. And so yes, there's going to be a cooling, but is there going to be a crash? I don't think so. No, there wasn't before it would just, we trended into a buyer's market and we saw a wave. So it always seems to be from what I've seen, I started in 2008 is the detached market sees the, sees the push and then it puts pressure on the townhouses and then people get priced out of that market and they go to the condos and then there's a cooling. And so we're riding these kind of like two and a half year cycles where it's really hot for two and a half years. And then we see a cooling for two and a half years. And then we're going back up again. So for me, what's the most uh, similar feel to this is that 2016, 17 peak minus the city, because the city again, during the pandemic has been flat, flat, flat. Um, but as far as the detached market, which is the wave that I've been riding for the last two and a half years, um, I think that it'll be similar to to that but 2008 it was like a you know a global or at least north american crisis it was my first year and it was a great year it to start actually to start, yeah yeah you learn how to just grind and to work hard and my first year i think i did two or three deals and then i learned really what how to put the time in which was really beneficial to how i you know steer my business now yeah, it's funny you say you're starting at a hard time. I was talking to someone and they said it's so important during the hard times to, to learn and, and to build because those are where you'll learn the most and have to be forced into a situation to learn the most. So um, Got it. onwards and upwards since then. Okay. Um, I, Cole Harbor, being away, from, uh, grew up in Scottsdale, moving to Vancouver, Cole Harbor's always had uh, you know, a place to my heart. My grandparents have a place down there and spent a lot of time. Uh, your office is down there. Is there one building in that, uh, in that area that is your favorite? I love the Karina Callisto Tower. So <clears throat> I'm at um, uh, Ascala, which is 323 Jervis. And then right next to that, to my east, are two towers called Karina and Callisto. And um, they're beautifully, architecturally, they're beautiful. They're right on the seawall. They offer spectacular views, um, <clears throat> but they're not over the top. Uh, and, and they're just timeless and classic. Um, they smell like eucalyptus when you go in the lobby. Wow. Um, the concierge are on point. Uh, it just feels very warm um, and it doesn't feel pretentious. You know, I, I love the Fairmont, but you know, you, you it's the scene and the people watching and all that. And, you know, we've sold a bunch of units in there, but I, what I love about Green and Callisto is it just has, you know, a warm, clean, um vancouver-esque feel to it and for sure the floor plans are great too so for sure that those would be my top two in cool harbor yeah and and what is something like that trade out at a per square foot basis yeah so the the 03 and the 04s which are the 1350 square footers on the corner those with a partial view would be sort of in the 1900 bucks a foot and then the two front units that are now the north the northeast northwest um, those would sort of start in the 2200 a foot for original condition. Um, the higher you go up, the better. But I like being mid building when it comes to waterfront because you're actually looking into the view. So those would, you know, per floor as you go up, let's say that they're about 25,000 per floor. But you're, if you're on the 28th floor, you're, you're going over the view. But if you're on the sort of 12, 15 range, you're looking into the ocean. So you mm -hmm. can be sitting on your couch you know, really looking into the ocean is pretty special. So that's my favorite. Uh, that's my favorite eye level. Let, let us know if any of those floor plans come up. Will do. Will do. Um, I'm going to listen to it actually tomorrow morning on something similar. So yeah. Cool. Very cool. Posted. Yeah. And, um, you know, downtown Airbnb for investors has become a popular strategy. There's obviously uh, a select amount of buildings within the downtown core that allow people to operate Airbnb and there's conditions of how, you know, you operate it as primary residence, stuff like that. Well, yes. um, is, is, is that a strategy that you work with? Are you familiar with Airbnb? Do you have clients that come to you saying, Hey, Chantel, I'm interested in Airbnb. What, what are your thoughts on it? I mostly worked on the listing side of that. So the Mark, um, a building by Ani that's uh, Richards and, Pacific anyway. Um, that's an Airbnb building and I've sold multiple listings in there. So people do like that. Um, there, I think there's only 16 Airbnb buildings total Vancouver that that allowed for it. And, and if you don't 
allow for it as a strata, it's pretty strict and you can, you know, be quickly uh, voted off to force to sell. So it's a big no, no uh, if you're not an Airbnb building. So there's pros and cons. I mean, if you're an Airbnb building and you're an owner and you live there, I wouldn't want to live there as much because you've got all this turnover traffic. But as an investor, you are, you know, reaching great returns. Now, if the management of an Airbnb is time consuming. And so you definitely, if, you, if you're a full-time, if you have a full-time job, there's no way that you can manage an Airbnb. I mean, you could, but I wouldn't want to. Um, so it's a full-time job to do that. So um, it's a great, and it's a lucrative investment. If you have a, if you, you need a time, you need a property manager to manage it for you. Um, but I mean, yeah, if, if you've got the right building and the right property manager, I th- I'd say go for it. Um, but then what buildings are you buying in? Are they good buildings for resale? And then does the Airbnb diminish the asset because it's taking a toll? How many people are coming through the doors? Do you know what I mean? And then it's kind of got that um oh that's an airbnb building right okay you know that kind of thing so i think it's you have to be careful um what kind of investment are you looking for are you looking for a a solid long-term reputable investment or are you just looking for that return to pay itself down and then on the on on the resale side maybe you're not making as much of an appreciation uh, percentage there so it just depends on what kind of investment you want to go for great points thank you a lot of talk around Airbnbs, but uh, you know, there's so much that goes more that goes into it, and those are some yeah great uh, kind of insights as well as what to look at. Um, we touched on it earlier with the rising interest rates, with the interest rates rising and inflation. Um, how have you seen that impact the delivery of new products into this market with um, the already very little supply? Well, there is going to be more supply coming up. Like I said before, like I think that if you go to um, to remortgage and then you have to uh, you know, remortgage, go through the stress test, and then you're, you're, you have to qualify at a higher rate, maybe that you can't take on that new mortgage. And so that could offer the market more inventory based on, unfortunately, sellers, uh, owners not being able to qualify at the new rate. So there's that piece. Um, you know, as far as inflation goes, I don't know about you, but like I'm going to the grocery store for my regular old, you know, pick up and I'm going, wow, that was, you know, 85 bucks and now it's 130 bucks. Yeah. So um, what is that doing for people? Well, maybe they're um, being a little bit more cautious on their spending, um, staying home a little bit more thinking, wow, this is, you know, this is a, this is a big deal, you know, on the, on the daily, um, how much more am I spending to keep up with inflation costs? And then as far as the interest rate goes, you know, that for the person that's got a flat uh, $100,000 a year income, that's a big, that's a big increase, yeah. right? And so, I mean, between inflation and interest rates, is there going to be more inventory coming to market? Unfortunately, I think so, because it's just an afford- affordability question. Um, and so, maybe people won't be able to carry that what they could carry when we were looking at a uh, a lower interest rate and i do think though that there's going to be another increase but it sounds like that increase will stay and then there'll be another dip down because with inflation going up i mean it, it, it's it's on it's um it, we can't carry that level of increase consistently up you know the whole who, who can afford that based on what we've done over the last couple of years with with purchasing so it would you know it would crush our markets. Yeah. And do you think that uh, obviously inflation increasing, construction costs, construction costs increasing, do you think that's going to affect the supply on the other side? Obviously, with people not being able to afford uh, places, they'll be on the market, but there won't be any new product available because of those costs. Well, like builders are building right now because, you know, the cost to buy a lot and then the time frame to carry it and then getting trades and then the cost of materials is wild. And so li- literally builders are out of the market and we're seeing, you know, lots come up for sale more so than normal because they just don't want to carry all of this um these 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 uh, projects right and so they're trying to unload some of their projects but there's just not a lot of builders that are actively in the market and same with renovators i mean i would tell a client you're better off to buy something renovated right now than you are to try to renovate it yourself unless you know you've got deep pockets and you can 
afford to sit on it and just, you know, take two years to do your perfect rental because it's not going to be, oh yeah, we could turn that around in three months. No, you like, you don't have the trades. You don't have the, the materials. Like I asked my contractor to build my son a fort and he's like, we can't get the lumber for that. I'm like, what? Well, you can't get the lumber for a fort, but that's what we're looking at. So to do a real quality rental right now um, is going to be costly and timely. And so that will affect the um, the market as well being that if it's if it's a product that needs a full gut, the buyer might think twice about buying that, which would then make the seller have to reduce the price. So I think the cost of inflation will directly affect the housing market in what needs to be renovated and built. So that could affect our market for sure. Yeah, it's you know it's it's interesting. You know the 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 economic indicators are now potentially decreasing the amount of new supply that's coming onto the marketplace and already market with such limited supply already. And what are, what are the long-term implications on affordability and pricing when in three years that that product's not being delivered onto the market when you are expecting 250 units in that building to maybe come online. And so is there, is there a project, a pre-sale project that you're, you're excited about here this year, um, whether downtown North shore, uh, any, anywhere here? There's two. Um, first one downtown is 1515 by Bosa. Um, the reason being is the finishing there is, is better than I've ever seen anything. Um, and it took my breath away when I went into the pre-sale center. I mean, you're looking at 3000 a foot entry level. So no doubt they're going to put out some pretty incredible product. Um, but the, the attention to detail there and the finish was, was really, really impressive. Now, you know, how is this market going to affect that, um, delivery, you know, that's a 10 year out project. So hopefully by then we won't be dealing with this inflation crisis and they'll be able to achieve, uh, the, they'll be able to deliver the product that they promised the market. But, um, yeah, it was really impressive when I went into their sales center. Um, but you know, the unit that I had my eye on with a client, um, was $3,300 a foot. And he walked away because he was just thinking, okay, $3,300 a foot today will likely be $3,300 a foot in 10 years from now. I don't see much appreciation there. So to, to, to put my money down for 10 years, is that the right move? Um, but in terms of a finished product, that's going to be a gem. That's going to be a really spectacular building for Cool Harbor. And then for myself personally, there's a couple of projects by Anthem over um, in my neck of the woods uh, by Kate's Park in North Vancouver. And if, I, you know, if they're starting at sort of, you know, 900 bucks a foot um, for a wood frame master plan community for a one bedroom, you know, looking at 599, you know, that's a great place to put some money um, down to down by Deep Cove, you've got full amenities, you can be downtown within 20 minutes. So I think that that's going to be something that I personally would like to look into on the pre-sale side of things. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And that kind of leads me into my, my question here. Um, do you personally invest into real estate? And if you do kind of, what, what are you looking at or pre-sale something you you're targeting right now? Yeah. So um, we own our own home and we have a condo in Gastown that we've owned for a while now uh, that we rent out and pre-sales. Yes. We've done a few pre-sales, wood frame, quick turnarounds, three year three to five year holds with the construction timeline in there. And we've done really well, you know, a hundred thousand here, a hundred thousand there. Um, so that's been really lucrative. My brother-in-law is a developer. Um, and so he's got a couple projects on the go that we've invested in and done really well. So that's been really good for us. Um, and then, you know, it's just looking at, you know, not buying at the peak of the market and waiting for the right product. I think our next opportunity is going to be in the recreational um, because that market, you know, soared. And, you know, if you're seeing rising interest rates and carrying two homes um, and then forced back into the city, you know, there's so many things that can come into play that can affect the recreational housing market. And I think that we're going to be able to capitalize on that in the next couple of years. So we have our eye out for something, uh, something special. Amazing. Amazing. And, um, you know, in, in 2010, you were just getting into the industry for a few years. Vancouver had the Olympics. You know, you show off a city like Vancouver on the on the world stage like that. Just with the re recent announcement of FIFA in 2026, the World Cup coming back or coming up here to Vancouver. How, how does a, how does a tournament or, or an organ uh, having an event like that, uh, you know, impact a city like Vancouver? 
Oh man, I mean, <clears throat> the 2010 Olympics was so incredible for our city. Not only did we build uh, Olympic Village for the athletes and for uh, visitors to come, you know, people's eyes were on Vancouver. I mean, it is a breathtaking city. You've got the mountains, the ocean. I, 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 I've done a fair bit of traveling, but I, you know, coming home to Vancouver is always so great um, for so many reasons. So people are going to see this city, you know, as they are already on a global, um, from a global perspective, like, wow, that city offers a lot. It's uh, within Canada. Um, you know, it's, it's on the ocean. It has the mountains. You can do the skiing. You've got Whistler, you've got the Okanagan, you've got, you know, so much to offer. And so, yeah, I think when FIFA comes, it's just another opportunity for Vancouver to go, hello, like, look what we have here. Um, and um, for people around the world to just see what a special place we have. I mean, we're already up there with New York and Australia. And I mean, I, I, I love New York. I've never been to Australia, but I think that Vancouver is, you know, ready to play ball quite literally. And uh, we, we offer, we offer a lot. And so I think it's going to be good for, for us to get some global exposure. And, um, you know, you can't come to Vancouver and say, I didn't like it there. I don't think that's possible. So it'll be really good for our city. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, Granville Street again. I remember that during the Olympics and just everyone with their jerseys on just running down the streets singing. It was uh, quite, quite the time was quite the time and you know our city needs some some love some positivity you know we've all been through this pandemic it's been really hard on everybody's morale so to get some good news like that and then to um to live it and and to celebrate uh, what we have here will be really good for 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 our city yeah I just love it. <laughs> looking forward to it and uh, yeah. one one final question here what's the one thing you're really looking forward to uh to hear this summer here to wrap it up Oh my goodness. I have three sons. And so it's been really, really busy. And so I've been, uh, you know, busy, busy mom, uh, working hard, working long hours. And so I'm excited to, you know, have a little breather over this, uh, this time in the market where things cool down a little bit, just to spend some time with my husband and my sons and give them the best version of me when I'm, I'm not chopping carrots and countering offers and changing diapers and all of that. So it'll be nice to take a break and pause and appreciate what a beautiful life we have and how grateful I really am for all of the great things in our life. So yeah, that's what I'm most excited for. Fantastic. What a great way to end it. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much okay. for doing this with, uh, with us and I, we appreciate your, your knowledge, your expertise and uh, the story shared here today. That's an honor to be, uh, to be considered. So thanks for having me as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. See you Wonderful. later.